Welcome to Rise Up Namobia. So in this video, we are going to be looking at indices part 4 which involves the fraction exponent law by Medianata aka the resistor of bad and the lover of good hashtag dark and lovely underscore walk by faith and not by sight. So let's dive in. What does the fraction exponent law state? This is the friction exponent law. Now it consists of two parts like this side is what we call the exponent or index notation and the other side is like the root notation. Okay, so say for example you are given something like this to work out. Now there are many ways that you can solve this problem, but I'll be showing you two ways, okay, in this video. So the first way is by actually using this law straightforward, just by changing this exponent notation, or let me say index notation, into root notation, and then you solve from there. So what is this? Or how will it look like when you put it into root notation? It will look like this. Okay? Now, let's start working out. What is 8 raised to the power 2? Let's start inside. You know, you can also start outside. Like finding the root. But let's start inside for this video. So, 8 raised to the power 2 will give you 64. Okay? Now, we can deal with the root. So, what is this like the 6th root of 64. It gives us 2. Okay? Now how about if they told you to do this or solve this without a calculator? So what you do is you can solve this without a calculator by finding its prime factors like the prime factors of the base. Now what is our base? The 8 is our base in this case. Okay? So now, if you don't know how to find the prime factors, because I'll be briefly walking through, there is a video that I will be putting down in the description below that you can go watch, okay? So I'll put the link in the description. So what do we do? We take the base, which is 8, okay? And then we divide it by the first prime number, so which is 2. So what is 8 divided by 2? gives us 4. Now what is 4 divided by 2? It gives us 2. Now what is 2 divided by 2? It's 1. Okay? Now, you count your 2's here. How many 2's do we have? 1, 2, 3. Okay? So, this basically means 2 times 2 times 2, like 3, 3 times, will give you 8. Okay? So, how about if we write this 2 times 2 times 2 in exponent, like in exp exponential form? How will it look like? It will look like this. Remember I told you the base and the exponent. The exponent basically means it's the base multiplied by the number of time in the exponent. For example, this means 3 or rather 2 multiplied by itself 3 times, which is what? we have here okay so after we get this answer in our like in exponential form we put it in brackets and bring our exponent which is the fraction that was here outside the bracket okay now after you do that now we'd like to work with the fraction now from here remember the power law which I explained to you in part 1 okay which, which means you need to multiply this exponent with the exponent inside, which is this 3. Now, how can you do that? We can do that by also making this 3 inside a fraction. How can we make the 3 a fraction? By putting it over 1, okay? So now we have 2 raised to the power 3 over 1 multiplied by 2 over 6. So what's the answer when you multiply this 2? The answer will be, the base doesn't change. The base is still 2. But the answer will be 1. Okay? If you multiply these two fractions, it will give you 1. Now, what is 2 raised to the power 1? It's just 2. So, that is your final answer. Now, as you can see here, these are two different methods. But you still got the same answer. 
Okay? Let's look at another example. How about when you have 36 raised to the power 3 over 2? Now again, since it's in exponent, like exponential form or let me say in its index notation, you can change it to the root notation and then you just solve. Start inside. What is 36 raised to the power 3? To give you this answer. Now one thing I want you to notice is like when you have a 2, you don't necessarily need to write it down because this sign already means square root and square is like when it's 2 okay so this means 2 you don't have to when your denominator here is a 2 you don't really necessarily need to write 2 here good so what is the square root of this number it will give you 216 and that is your final answer good now how do you go about when you're using this method. So, now we look for the prime factors of 36. Okay? So we write 36 down, then we divide it by 2. What do we get? We get an 18. Okay? So we divide the 18 by 2 again, and we get a 9. Now when we get to 9, and we divide it by 2, it won't be a whole number anymore. So meaning we can't divide 9 by 2 because it won't be a whole number. So we divide 9 by 3. Okay. And if you don't understand here, I advise you to go watch that video that I put down in the description. Like I, I'll put a link there. Okay. Just go check it out. Because now when you divide 9 by 3, it gives you a 3. Now when you divide 3 by 3, what will you get? You'll get a 1. Meaning you'll check all the numbers on this side. The 2 and another 2 and this 2 3's. Okay? So th they mean that 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 will give you 36. Okay? Now, if you are to change this into exponential form, this 2 times 2 is the same as you are saying 2 raised to the power 2 multiplied by 3 raised to the power 2. Why? Because the 2 like the 2 that are multiplied they are 2. So it's logic like it's logic guys. Just look at how many 2's are being multiplied by themselves here. They are 2. Now how many 3's are being multiplied by themselves? They are also 2. That's why the exponent is 2. Okay? Now if you get to this point, since these two exponents are the same, 2 and 2, you multiply the bases. So what is 2 multiplied by 3? It gives you 6. So the exponent stays the same. So now you have 6 as a base and 2 as an exponent. Now remember, what do you do from there? You introduce your brackets and then you bring the exponent that was like with the 36 which is 3 over 2 now from here what do you do you use the power law so the power law states that you need to multiply this exponent with the exponent inside the bracket okay now what do we do for us to multiply this fraction let's change the 2 into a fraction how do we do that by putting it over 1 the same way we did here so when we put 2 over 1 and we multiply it by 3 over 2, what answer do we get? We get 3 as the answer. Remember the base stays the same throughout. Okay? Now what is 6 raised to the power 3? It's 216. And that is your final answer. You see? So basically, there are again two methods that we used here, but you got the same answers. So the reason I brought out this example was just to show you this that sometimes it might be 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 unlike here where everything was just like 2 2 2's okay in this case we had 2 and another 2 and a 3 and a 3 okay so now how about 
when you have an exponent that is a negative fraction okay how do you do or how do you go about now before I explain that if you are finding this video informative please do make that like button blue and if your subscribe button still looks like this it's way overdue Valentine's Day please make it darker by subscribing okay good so now let's get into this example so what do we do number one even though we have a negative fraction as an exponent we still find the prime factors of the base okay so what is our base our base is 81 so we write our 81 there we divide our 81 by 3 what answer do we get we get 27 and then we divide the 27 by 3 okay what answer do we get we get 9 9 divided by 3 you get 3 now what is 3 divided by 3 you'll get a 1 okay so now how many 3's do we have here 1 2 3 4 that's the same as 3 multiplied like by itself 4 times will give you 81 so what does this mean? This simply means 3 raised to the power 4 in exponential form. So you always have to write it in exponential form here. Put it into brackets and then you bring your exponent, which is the fraction. So you bring your negative 1 over 4 over here. Now what do we do from here? We use the power law, which is in part 1 of indices. So we multiply the negative 1 over 4 by this 4 what do we do with the 4 we make it a fraction as well so we put it 4 over 1 and then we multiply it with a negative 1 over 4 now what do you get when you multiply 4 over 1 multiplied by negative 1 over 4 you'll get a negative 1 okay now from here what do you do now if you watch the previous video where we spoke about the negative power law you will know what to do but in case you didn't watch that video let me just bring out an example from that video where we had 4 raised to the power negative 1 what did we do we made it a fraction which is by putting it over 1 and then we found its reciprocal which is this now the reciprocal is just basically like flipping Whatever is on top, putting it at the bottom, and whatever was at the bottom, putting it on top, okay? Now, the reason for doing that is to get rid of the negative, because we don't work with negative exponents, okay? So, that's why when we flipped this, it became a positive 1. Now, if you do that with this, your answer will be 1 over 3. Now, remember, there will be like power, uh, a power 1 like for example like here but it's not necessary to write it there because the power when once like it's it's raised to the power 1 it's not really necessary so 1 over 3 as your final answer is also good so in case you are wondering what we did this is the negative power law that involves this okay so Thank you very much for watching this video. Please do like, subscribe, turn on that notification button to be the first to see the next upload. Share with friends, family and classmates. And remember, together we rise to higher heights. Apart, we all stay behind. Cheers.